Hello, good afternoon. My name is Roberto Garcia. I came here to talk about uh, blockchain. Uh, when I was told for the first time that uh, I had to make a presentation at Big Data Spain about blockchain, I thought, okay, Big, uh, big Data. Big Data is about a technology that may helps and is uh, data processing, while maybe blockchain is the opposite. In blockchain, we use blockchain to uh, provide security and to avoid uh, a bad use of data and to avoid uh, data manipulation. So I said, What's, what can I tell pe these people about uh, blockchain? Uh, so I thought maybe we, I can tell them why it's so important for business. Uh, something that is uh, important to know is that a lot of people is uh, talking about blockchain, it's a technology that is making a lot of noise, and it's not uh, because of uh, how uh, of, of, of about the uh, IT performance, but it's because it can create new business models and a new way of exchanging data and assets between companies. And this is what I'm going to, to explain during the, during the, the presentation. Uh, I suppose that everybody has uh, knows about uh, Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin started from the very first time in the year 2009 as a way of uh, uh, of sharing value between between peers without the intervention of any bank or any central authority. Uh, okay, B uh, Bitcoin, it's a currency, a digital currency, a native digital currency, and the technology that the, uh, this, te this uh, currency is using to make all this exchange of, uh, of value is blockchain. Blockchain is just a set of protocols that allow us to exchange data, tokens, and information between, uh, between peers uh, making sure that uh, the origin and the destiny of the of the data uh, is known, and uh, the information or the data that is transferred has not been manipulated. Essentially, uh, blockchain is a network of uh, databases where uh, any every time you introduce a registry in this uh, database. Uh, the data, we know that the, the, the database cannot be manipulated. It's an immutable database because uh, every register is linked cryptographically with the other one uh, by using an algorithm. This algorithm is calculated, creates a cryptogram that is calculated uh, using the data that we are registering plus the algorithm that was used in the previous, uh, in the previous uh, registry which means that all algorithms, all these uh, cryptograms are linked together. That's the reason why this database cannot be manipulated because if you want to manipulate one registry, you, you have to change the whole database. And on top of that, taking into account that this database is replicated in several places, uh, this is almost impossible to change all the, all the data, or any data in, a, in one of the databases because the other ones will recognize that uh, the data has been manipulated. But this is an important thing, but what makes unique uh, blockchain is that it can execute scripts, uh, what we call smart contracts. Uh, one important thing, a smart contract is not a smart nor a contract, it's just a kind of workflow that you can register in the blockchain and that can be executed. Uh, the important thing is that uh, once you introduce this workflow, uh, you set a kind of uh, set of uh, triggers that uh, has to happen in order to execute this, uh, this smart contract. And this is something that uh, has no manual intervention. I mean, there is no interpretation about whether the contract has to be executed or not. Once you set the, set the triggers that uh, must happen, if these triggers happen, that the contract will be executed. So this is an important attribute of blockchain. Um, talking about the technology that uh, blockchain is using, we are not using something new or something unique. For instance, this uh, distributed uh, database layer is just a technology that uh, was used since the, since the 70s. What makes unique is the combination of the, pub the public layer, uh, the distributed layer, with the cryptogram, uh, the cryptography that I mentioned before, this algorithm to link all the, all the um, registries together, and also 
the uh, asymmetric cryptography, the public and private keys that we use to sign all the transactions. This is a very standard uh, technology that is used, for instance, in credit cards in the banking industry. But the combination of these three technologies is what makes uh, blockchain unique as a technology. Um, most probably, everybody has have, uh, learned about uh, public networks. Uh, can you raise your hand who have learned about, who knows about public networks like Bitcoin or Ethereum? Can you? Okay. This is uh, the first application we found about blockchain. Ethereum and Bitcoin, public, ne public networks, where anybody can join this network and download the whole database and start making uh, transactions between the different uh, peers. The problem with this type of networks, in order to ensure that this cryptogram is not uh, broken, uh, we use an algorithm called proof of work. Uh, and this is an algorithm that, uh, by, uh, that uh, generates a cryptogram that needs to be solved uh, aleatory. And that means that uh, a transaction, in order to be validated, can take minutes, even hours. When uh, in the banking industry we started to look into this technology, we thought, okay, we cannot use this type of uh, algorithm because uh, we, if, we, 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 if we want to make a transaction, we cannot spend uh, minutes or hours uh, in order to get this transaction be validated. We need something uh, different. So people started to uh, look into new technologies. Then uh, Ripple came into, into the market. Uh, Hyperlayer, or now we, are, we have Quorum or, or Parity as an alternative to Ethereum or Bitcoin. These are essentially similar uh, blockchains like Ethereum, but the main difference is that uh, they can run in what we call private networks. So networks where uh, you can only make transactions between uh, databases which are a certain uh, IP address. So in order to make any transaction, you have to uh, get an agreement with the rest of the nodes in order to uh, be part of the, um, of the network. By using this uh, kind of private transactions where everybody, sorry, private networks, where everybody knows, knows each other, we can use different algorithms, uh, like the consensus algorithms, in, uh, which can take only a uh, few seconds in, uh, in order to validate the, the transaction. And this was until last year, and last year, in Spain, we were, we were very innovative. Uh, some crazy people from different banks and different companies, we started to, to think about, okay, uh, can we have something different? Something that uh, being in between a private and public network so that uh, the network is controlled by a set of uh, trusted companies, but we can open this network to everybody so anybody can join this network to make transactions. And we thought about a new type of uh, networks like uh, that we called uh, public uh, permission networks, which are public networks where practically anybody can join the network and start uh, issuing transactions. But these transactions are validated, are registered uh, and distributed into the network only by a few set of, of nodes that are uh, controlled by, a, uh, by trusted companies. Uh, essentially, this network was called Alastria. Uh, now we have uh, more than 200 uh, companies already involved, even uh, governmental offices, universities. Uh, this is an experiment so far. So we don't know whether this is going to, this can be go live or not. It's an experiment, but it's opening a new way of having something in between the private networks and the uh, full public, uh, public uh, networks. As I mentioned before, um, one of the things that uh, scared me about uh, talking here about uh, blockchain is that uh, it's a very unmatured technology. It's a very new technology. I mean, the combination of this, all these uh, protocols uh, is very promising uh, in terms of uh, security. Uh, we, uh, we can make uh, near real-time transactions and operations, but uh, it's very uh, immature in terms of, for instance, data usability. One of the problems we had with blockchain is that uh, since it's so secure, it's very difficult to uh, manipulate data, to start data uh, in order to make data analysis uh, and so on. In fact, normally what we do uh, whenever we create um, an application based on blockchain, uh, next to the blockchain uh, database, we have a MongoDB or a data lake 
where we sent a copy of the, of the transactions so that the people in data analytics or in customer operations uh, can manipulate this data and can uh, use this data for, for the analysis. Another big problem, the main problem for this technology is, is about the scalability. Uh, when we talk about private networks, uh, most probably most of the existing technology is able to register around 30, 50 transactions per second, no more. And if we think about the payments industry, for instance, Visa or MasterCard, they are able to process thousands of transactions in one second. So it's a big difference in the scale. So when you think about uh, a business case or uh, a use case for blockchain, you have to take this uh, in mind. You can use this only if you need less than 30 transactions per second. It's important. Uh, the, other, the other big problem is around uh, transparency. Bitcoin was born uh, to have full transparency in the network. So everybody knew uh, which uh, wallet was making transactions with which wallet and um, who are the owners of uh, which wallet is the owner of the assets. While in the banking industry, this is something that uh, we don't like because uh, we want uh, customer pr uh, privacy. Uh, so uh, there are some business cases or some use cases where you cannot use a blockchain or you can use different versions of the blockchain where they achieve uh, the, this privacy issue. For instance, Hyperledger is very, is very used in case you need uh, high privacy. But in case you need a marketplace to exchange uh, the tokens, maybe something based on Ethereum, like uh, Quorum or Parity, is a better option. Um, the other important thing, talking about uh, this technology, is that um, the idea of this technology is to create new rails to exchange information, data, and value between companies. Uh, that means that you need to create new networks. And this means that you also need to create a governance model for this network in terms of uh, uh, SLAs regarding uh, technology uh, availability of the nodes. So if, if one company is responsible for one node, uh, they have uh, to be uh, they have to, to have uh, SLAs in order to to avoid the network going down uh, every every time, and also it's about uh, how we are going to regulate any dispute or any any problem in the in, in, in one transaction. So this type of of new rails means that you need new governance models and new uh, uh, reglaments. So, so far, <coughs> I, I talk about the technology. Some people may think, okay, this, this technology is not so good uh, as I expected. Uh, why is people so interested in this technology? We are very interested in this technology because it can, it can change the way companies interact with each other in terms of exchanging data, exchanging value, and exchanging assets. Uh, taking as an example with the banking industry, in the banking industry, uh, essentially, a core banking system is just a, um, an accounting ledger where we re each bank registers all the money that we hold on behalf of our customers and also the money we are lending to some customers. The problem we have uh, is uh, when we want to make, for instance, an international money transfer from one bank to another bank, is that uh, the, uh, the, bank that is, is in his, the bank that is receiving the, the order to make the uh, the transaction doesn't know whether the bank that is originating this uh, transaction holds the, uh, the money, the assets, uh, to cover this transaction. So that means that uh, whenever you have to move transfer from one country to another, to another country, to one person to another person, the person that is going to receive the money doesn't receive the money until the bank uh, receives the money. So, and this takes maybe two, three days. Uh, while when using blockchain technology, uh, more or less the idea is to have all the, all the course banking system uh, connected together so that whenever I start, whenever I receive a um, uh, money transfer uh, order from one bank, I can check whether this bank holds the funds to, make the the, to cover the transaction or not. And this uh, applies to the banking industry, but it also may apply to, other, to many other industries. Uh, like uh, telecom companies, for instance, when you want to migrate 
uh, uh, one um, uh, one mobile number from one company to another company. If both telephone companies are connected by a blockchain, uh, they can easily check whether the the customer has or has indeed uh, signed a, a new contact with a with a new telephone operator uh, just by checking the the blockchain database. This can lead into a new way of uh, of economy. Uh, imagine that uh, this example that I uh, explained about uh, the banking industry uh, be extrapolated to to more sectors. So imagine that, uh, for instance, I don't know you how you know about uh, international trade ecosystems. When a company wants to export. Uh, produce to another country, it's, uh, it's an, uh, almost a nightmare because you don't know whether the customer at the end and in, in the other country uh, has the money to, to pay for the goods and the other way around. The company that is ordering a uh, product uh, doesn't know whether the company, the supplier will uh, deliver the, the products. Uh, in the banking industry, we have a quite complex product, quite expensive product, which is very manual intensive, which is called the letter of credit. That is a product that guarantees that the, in which uh, the bank of the supplier and the bank of the of the buyer guarantee the operation. Okay, uh, and this is a very manual process because uh, once uh, the customer uh, hires this uh, or contacts this, uh, this, uh, this this letter of credit, uh, from the from the time the the product is, is sold to the time the product is delivered, a lot of things may happen in the in the in the meantime. Uh, for instance, we have to be uh, we the banks before paying uh, paying to the other bank. We must know whether the product has arrived or not. So we ha we we have to receive a confirmation from the logistic operator, um, and also whether the the, the imagine that uh, we are selling or the the customer is selling uh, one ton of oranges. We need we need to know whether all the oranges arrived perfectly. Or whether some were lost in the in the in the in the, in the process. Um, imagine that we had a platform where the seller, the buyer, and the banks and the logistics companies share all this information in a in a blockchain uh, with several contracts. Imagine we 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 could have one smart contract between the the buyer and the seller, a contract for a payment guarantee. In which uh, the, the bank guarantees the payment uh, to the buyer. On the other hand, we have the contract between the seller and the buyer for the goods. And on the other hand, we had a third contract between the uh, the seller of the products and the logistics company. So, uh, when the product is is delivered, the the logistics company can confirm in the blockchain that the product has been delivered. Then the bank of the buyer can check that the product has been delivered and make the payment to the to the seller's bank. Uh, this is a new way of interacting between uh, different companies in different sectors. There are more examples, uh, but this is a real example of something that the banks are working right now. Uh, and you will see later on uh, one platform that we already have in production uh, in Spain uh, with some of our customers. Um, another example of how uh, this um, blockchain can interact, can make, inter can facilitate interaction between different uh, companies in different sectors, is in the cars industry. Imagine that a car manufacturer, BMW, Mercedes, whatever, uh, starts to register all the cars in a blockchain, uh, so that when a dealer uh, buys some some cars for the stock, uh, this can be this operation can be registered in the blockchain as well. So that imagine that uh, this dealer wants to get a finance uh, for this uh, this car he's buying uh, for the stock. We as a bank we can know whether uh, this uh, operation is real. So uh, this guy this company is buying some cars from the car manufacturer, and we can also know when this uh, car is sold. 
So once the car is sold, we can ask this uh, dealer to pay the, the whole uh, loan that he is asking from, from us. And the same can apply uh, regarding the, uh, the end customer. When the end customer buys this car, uh, we can offer a, uh, a loan to this, uh, to this, um, to this person. The, uh, the car remains on the, on the name of the, of the bank, and once, the, once the, um, this person uh, uh, pays the whole car, then we transfer this ownership in the blockchain to the, to the end person. Um, imagine that we also involve uh, workshops and insurance companies in this, in this ledger, so that all the different uh, modifications in the car, all, all the maintenance that this car has, uh, uh, has cut can be registered in the, into the blockchain. So when the, when the, the, the insurance, all, and also all the accidents. So when an insurance company wants to, uh, to issue a new, a new policy to this, uh, to this person, they can check the history of the car, and based on the history of the car, uh, they can put a different price or not. And also, uh, when this car um, is sold in the second market, in the second hand market, uh, the new buyer of the car can check all the history of the car, and based on this, he can make a, a, a lower or higher offer uh, to the seller. So this is uh, an example of how uh, a blockchain could change the way we, are, uh, we manage the life cycle of a car, for instance. And if we think uh, further in time, uh, imagine that uh, this new way of, uh, of uh, exchanging information and value between different companies uh, is extended to the, whole, to the whole world, to the whole organization, even to local governments, uh, to all companies. So imagine that all the relationships, all the contracts between companies and um, particulars and, with, uh, and all the reglaments uh, in the in the local in the local governments are regulated by smart contracts. In that case, there are there will not be a human uh, manipulation of all the information. Everything will be less more or less automatized, uh, depending on on the execution of some of some triggers, uh, so that uh, we can go uh, to what we call. Uh, the distributed autonomous society. So that means that uh, the whole society could be managed just by writing some smart contracts that re could regulate the whole relationship between the different actors in, the, in, in one economy. But this is a future vision. We are very far still. But uh, keep it in mind when you think about blockchain and how it can change uh, the way the, the economy works. Uh, coming back to the present, what we are working on uh, regarding blockchain, we can classify the applications of blockchain in five types of, uh, of applications. The first one is about value, value transfer. So this is, for example, Bitcoin. You can move value from one person to the other person. And I say value, no money. It could be money or it could be something that uh, has some value. Uh, the other important thing is around asset tokenization. We can create what we call digital twins of uh, physical uh, elements in the real world. We can tokenize this, this, this item. There are specific protocols that are under, under development right now uh, on how to create these, uh, these tokens. And you can exchange this token. Imagine that uh, you want, for instance, to uh, to exchange uh, petrol, uh, uh, petrol barrels or, um, I don't know, or even gold. You don't need to physically move the gold from one country to another country. You, you just need to, to, to tokenize the gold, uh, transfer uh, this gold in, in a blockchain and in a different country with uh, this operation registered in the blockchain, you can turn this, this token into real, real gold in a different in a different country. Uh, another application that uh, people is working on is ar is around digital ID, and this is what we call uh, self sovereign uh, IDs. Imagine that uh, you have a public uh, Ethereum uh, or blockchain network where anybody 
can register an identity. I can go and register my identity. Uh, and I can ask a trusted party, for instance, one university, the, 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 um, uh, a bank, a telecom company, uh, to verify my identity. I can uh, contact them, or even a notary. I can contact them and tell them I'm your customer, I'm this ID, have this ID of customer, I register this identity in the blockchain, I want you to verify that I'm this person and the place where I live. This is the way we, we think that uh, digital identities will work in the future with a distributed ledger like, uh, like, like uh, blockchain. And for instance, if you want to make uh, um, uh, some uh, operations uh, that, uh, like buying a house or something like that, you can do the same process, but in this case, you will ask a, a notary to verify your identity in the blockchain. So you can physically go to a notary and say, I registered this identity in the blockchain. I want you to, uh, to certify that I'm the person that uh, I claim uh, that I am in the, in the blockchain. Uh, so depending on the type of uh, transactions you want to do in the blockchain, uh, you could need uh, different levels of uh, authentication. So maybe from shared authentication to an authentication ba uh, made by a third company, a trusted one, like a utility company, a bank, um, a governmental office, or a very strong uh, authentication ba uh, made by a notary, for instance. We are also working on how to apply blockchain into the Internet of Things. But here we have a limitation. First, I think we need to have a very strong use case for the Internet of Things. Uh, we, we need Internet of Things to bear to be more used in the in the market. But basically, what we think that uh, we think that blockchain could provide two things in the IoT uh, environment. The first one is about uh, managing all the payments between machines. So we believe that in future, uh, machines will will pay for services to other machines. Um, micropayments, basically, and blockchain could be a cheap way of managing all these payments. And the other applications uh, that could, could have for, we could have for blockchain in the Internet of Things is about um, allowing inter the interaction um, be, uh, with some IoT devices. So imagine, as I mentioned before, one of the applications of blockchain is about uh, transfer of ownership of, of tokens. Imagine that uh, instead of uh, doing a, um, a, a, tr a permanent transfer of ownership, we can allow uh, people in the blockchain to interact uh, with a IoT device for for cert certain time. Imagine that uh, we want, for instance, uh, or people wants to check the temperature in one specific country. Or, one, or in one specific uh, city by interacting with a um, with a sensor, we can rent this sensor and allow uh, uh, the interaction with this sensor uh, using blockchain uh, to allow this uh, this interaction. And the most realistic uh, the application that we is more, is uh, wider used uh, today, and the one has uh, most cases right now is about business process automation with uh, with uh, third parties and also information reconciliation uh, between parties. Imagine that, uh, for instance, uh, we as a bank, uh, we are, um, um, we are uh, financing uh, consumer goods like uh, TVs, like uh, telephones. Uh, in this case, these uh, operations are not done by us, by, but by a retailer a telephone retailer or a telephone company or a TV, a TV retailer. Uh, in some cases, uh, we have difficulties uh, to match the operations that uh, the retailer uh, claims that he has done with the operations that we, thi we think he has done. Uh, if we use a, a blockchain, we can easily reconcile all the, the real operations. And these days, also, um, yesterday was announced by Telefonica that uh, they, they plan to use blockchain in order to reconcile all the international calls between uh, telecom companies. So imagine that you are calling from Spain to, um, to France, 
Uh, so by using a blockchain, uh, France Telecom and uh, Telefonica uh, can reconcile very easily uh, the, 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 the duration of, the, of this conference. Um, and they, they know whether the, the money that Telefonica is claiming is uh, or, real or not. What are we doing in Santander regarding blockchain? Basically, we work in, two in four big fields of applications. For, of course, payments, which is the obvious one. Uh, but we are also working in, uh, we, have, we are working in the corporate and commercial banking space because uh, when you deliver uh, financial products to big companies, most of these products are unique. They are not the standard, and they involve a lot of manual processes and a lot of manual operations uh, in the back office. Um, by using blockchain, we, we can automatize a lot of these uh, these processes just by using a blockchain that connects the bank with the customer and with uh, third parties involved in the in the operation. We are, since we are also a big group, we are present in many countries. We are also working together with the different banks in the different countries in uh, applications that will help us to get e efficiency uh, among us. I mean, uh, for instance, in terms of preventing fraud and delinquency. Uh, just by sharing, for instance, uh, information about um, delinquent customers or uh, customers that we know in one country that are potential terrorists or uh, money, money launders. Uh, we can exchange this information by using blockchain with all the different banks of the, of the group. And of course, we are very active in uh, participating in consortia and alliance. As I said before, blockchain is a network. It's a way of exchanging information with companies. Uh, there is no advantage of having one blockchain only for one um, enterprise. It's about sharing and making cooperative business models with all the with all the, with different companies in the in the ecosystem some examples of uh, the projects we have uh, right now uh, that are already in the newspapers uh, in regarding payments international payments uh, we are part of the utility settlement coin which is a consortium of uh, banks uh, that we are working together with the British uh, regulator uh, in, in order to, and the European Central Bank, in order to uh, create a new ecosystem of payments based on blockchain uh, for dollars, uh, euros, and pounds. Um, uh, the way it works is that uh, either we get a credit line from the Central Bank or we deposit money in the Central Bank, and in exchange, we get euro tokens, euro uh, dollar tokens, or uh, pounds tokens that we can exchange in this network. By doing this, um, uh, we don't need to wait until uh, we're clearing all the, all the, all the operations uh, before paying the end customer, but we can exchange these uh, tokens in the, in the network. So we can uh, make uh, money transfers in the same day instead of waiting for two or three days. Is an important improvement for the customer. Uh, the platform I mentioned before regarding a uh, letter of credits, uh, it's called WeTrade. WeTrade is a consortium of uh, 14 banks. Um, we are using, in this case, uh, Hyper, uh, well, in the previous one, we are using a version of Ethereum. In this case, we are using Hyperlayer from IBM. Uh, we are working with IBM in this in this uh, project. We have a, we have set up a joint venture with all the fourteen banks, and the idea is to facilitate a, pla a digital platform uh, to speed up uh, international trade between uh, small and medium enterprises. Uh, because with uh, with blockchain, we can reduce the cost of uh, the letter of credit just by using a digital platform instead of uh, the classical letter of letter of credit. The other application we are working on is the one I mentioned before uh, about uh, sharing information about uh, delinquent and uh, potential fraudulent uh, customers. In this case, we are working also with the British regulator and also with internal application uh, within our banks to exchange this information with other British uh, banks and also internally within our uh, banks, as I said before. 
and we are now the presidents of the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance. Uh, this is a, um, a consortium of, of uh, companies, uh, IT and uh, bank companies mainly, uh, that we, we are trying to define the specification for uh, enterprise use of Ethereum-like uh, blockchains. Uh, as I said before, uh, we cannot use uh, real or uh, full public uh, blockchains, but uh, private ones because of uh, scalability uh, problems and also regard, uh, because of all things uh, about uh, uh, transparency and privacy for the customers. And well, this is all I had to, to, to tell you. So I don't know if you have any question regarding uh, blockchain. Any question? Don't be shy. Uh, you, met, you mentioned blockchain being used for managing digital IDs, and the most useful blockchains are currently like distributed ledger and uh, like public. So, wouldn't keeping people's information there? Uh, make it available yeah. for everybody. Or yeah, who, for instance, who, GDPR, no, those things. Who, and who would be in control of? OK, this is a very interesting question. Uh, the idea is to register in the blockchain only all the certifications that uh, the, this person uh, has achieved. Imagine that I register my ID in the, in the blockchain. Uh, my name will not be there. My address will not be there. But uh, what I will have is that I have an ID, imagine X theta 0 2, and that this ID uh, has been certified, the, the address of this ID and the identity of this ID has been certified by Santander, for instance, that uh, he has a, um, a university degree certified by a certain university, but uh, the, the actual data will not be in the, in the blockchain, but uh, of what we call off chain. So, if uh, imagine that I want to get, um, for instance, to get a new uh, account open with a different bank, I can ask uh, with an application. Uh, the uh, the new bank will check that I have my ID uh, already checked by Santander, so I can allow Santander to provide my personal information. To this, uh, to this uh, new bank, and this exchange of information will not be done in the blockchain, but uh, off-chain. So the blockchain will only regulate uh, all the permissioning to get the uh, access to the information and which information has been certified or not. Okay. Any other question? My question is related to Alastria. Which are the use cases that you plan to test uh, in the short term? So what is the vision of Alastria in the next two or three years? OK, the first use case that Alastria is working on is ID, the digital ID. Um, we, are, uh, we are defining in Alastria uh, all the requirements for this digital ID and the strongest of the ID that you need depending on the use case. For instance, if you want to register into a, into a website, maybe you, you need a very weak uh, identification. But if you want to get a new bank account, maybe you need a stronger one. And if you want to, big, uh, to make a big operation, like for instance, buying a house or buying a car, maybe you need to go to the notary and get your ID validated by the notary. And this is the first uh, use case. Uh, on top of that, a lot of uh, companies are thinking about uh, potential applications for this. For instance, I know that uh, Metro Acesa is uh, working in uh, an application uh, to facilitate uh, all the utilities uh, when someone buys a car, uh, sorry, buys a house, uh, to facilitate uh, uh, to get all the utilities in the, for this new for this new house by using the blockchain. Thank you. You're welcome. There is another person over there.
Hello. Uh, my question is, uh, nowadays, um, the banks are a source of trust. So, for example, if um, there's a mistake on a system or there's a bug or you want to roll back a transaction that has been done or roll back a process, you can, by manually or automatically, you can do it so. But with those technologies, uh, how do you handle that situations in which you have to roll back a transaction? Okay. Is it possible? Uh, in a certain way, yes. Um, the important thing to know is uh, one of the properties of blockchain is that once you register that information in the blockchain, this, this uh, information remains forever. Okay? You cannot change this information in the, in the blockchain. But what you can do is to issue uh, another transaction that uh, changes the information of this one. I mean, um, it's like adding a new registry. Imagine that you have a registry that uh, you are sending money, $5, from A to B, but this is a mistake. You can issue a checkback saying that uh, from B to A, you are now moving this $5, so this will uh, reverse the, the transaction. So this is what you can do. But for instance, as, as I mentioned before, if you register any public uh, or personal data, this data cannot be removed. So that's one of the reasons why, in order to meet with GDPR, uh, you cannot put personal data into the, into the blockchain but you keep the personal data, uh, what we call off-chain. But the, the important thing to know is that, as you mentioned, uh, banks are more or less a trusted party. Uh, by using blockchain, the blockchain will be the trusted party. So that will be the source of the two. This is the, the key thing. Any other question? Okay, thank you very much.